Hello and welcome to Salt Bible Study, a ministry of Vernon Park Church of God, where our pastor is Gerald January Sr. I am Reverend Tasha Jackson and I'm your gracious host for today. And I'm so glad that you have decided to join us in this Salt Ministry Bible Study. So our lesson title for today is Freedom for the Future. And our lesson aim is by the end of this lesson, we want to understand the role of the Holy Spirit in our relationships with God and Jesus. And we want to feel empowered by the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of suffering, weakness or loss of direction. And then we want to live with hope as we seek God's purpose and calling. Amen. Our scripture focus for today is Romans 18 verses 18 through 37. So let's pray today. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share in your word together. We ask that you would open up our ears to hear, our minds to comprehend, and our hearts to receive the word that you have for us today. We know that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we today, we ask that you would lead and guide us along your excellent way. And this we pray and we pray it in Jesus name. Amen. So we're going to be talking about Romans chapter eight, uh, verses 18 through 37. But even before we go there in Romans seven, Paul writes about the grace of Christ. He shows us that without grace, the believer would live a life defeated and miserable in bondage to their sinful nature. In Romans 8, he shifts his focus to the supernatural life that has been made available to all believers in Jesus Christ. So our lesson today tells us that through the Holy Spirit, believers are now able to live a life free from condemnation, and they no longer have to be enslaved to sin. The Holy Spirit gives us victory over sin and allows us to experience true fellowship with God. The Spirit uh, working in the life of the believer leads us to victory. The Apostle Paul makes this distinction between two kinds of people. There are those who live according to the flesh and those who choose to live according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh take pleasure in corrupt desires, the things of the flesh. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it says, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But those who live according to the spirit submit to his leading and exhibit love, peace, goodness, and self-control. Galatians 5, through 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. The mark of a true believer is how we live not in our own strength and ability now. It is the ability to be led by the Spirit. It's not just what we can do, but what God is able to do through the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Amen. So let's look at our passage of Scripture today from Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to start with verses 18 through 25. And it says, Consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, 
but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship and the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This scripture is letting us know that there will come a time when everything that we faced on this earth will seem so insignificant in light of God's glory. I love this phrase that a good friend of mine would always use. She would say, what does it all matter in light of eternity? The truth is we spend a lot of time perseverating about insignificant things, especially in the light of God's grace. We worry about what God is doing in our lives now and about our future. But Luke 12 uh, verses 25 through 26 says this, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Jeremiah 17 verses 7 through 8 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Our faith in Jesus Christ enables us to wait patiently for him. That's waiting patiently for what he's doing in our lives now. And our lesson calls out patiently waiting for the fulfillment of God's manifested glory. Are you waiting patiently for him, family? Come on, let's continue to look at Romans uh, chapter 8 and let's look at verses 26 and 27. It says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. See, Paul reminds us that God is searching our hearts and he knows our motive and even the reason for our prayers. Well, praise God that the Spirit helps us when we are weak. When we don't even know what we ought to pray, the Spirit intercedes for us. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you are just stuck? A place where you just don't know in which direction you should be going? Well, that's where the Spirit of God intercedes for us. Our lesson said that the That the Holy Spirit working effectively in the life of the believer will line up the believer's will with the Lord's will and will cause us to pray prayers that will bring glory to God. The Spirit is a guide leading us in the direction of God's will so that we don't ever have to be lost. We don't ever have to stay stuck. We just lean on the Spirit and the Spirit will guide us. Amen. Psalms 119, uh, 133 says, Direct my footsteps according to your word and let no sin rule over me. You are guiding my feet in your word. Amen. Come on, let's continue to uh, look at this passage of scripture as we move on to Romans 8 verses 28 through 29. And we know that in all things, I love that part. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according 
to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. And we know in all things, God works. In all things, God works. God works and he is working for our good. Because of this, we can have confidence, confidence knowing that whatever we face, God is working. We may not always know how he's working or exactly what he is doing, but I read a quote that says this, at this moment, God is working behind the scenes in your life, arranging things in your favor. Do you believe that? That's a good place to say thank you, Lord. Bless you, God, and amen. Our lesson shares that he is an omniscient God. A.W. Tozer wrote in The Pursuit of God, he is omniscient, which means he knows in one free and effortless act, all matter, all spirit, all relationships, and all events. He knows all things. A Christian writer said this, our knowledge is limited and our best efforts at understanding are finite. We are trapped by our own experiences in a specific place and time. But God's knowledge is unlimited. Knowing that God is omniscient should allow us to trust his will. Amen. His word and his timing. Though we don't know all the answers, guess what, family? God does. And for that, we should rejoice. So we know in all things, God is working for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Just because we know God doesn't mean that we won't experience pain or sorrow or even suffering. But it does mean that when going through challenging times, our confidence is completely in God. When our confidence is found in God, he gives us strength to be content in every circumstance. Amen. In Philippians 4, 12 through 13, it says, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Are we confident in God who will give us the strength to face every situation that comes our way? Are we confident in a God that will give us a strategy for every circumstance, every circumstance? Earlier in the same chapter of Philippians, Paul tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When our confidence is in God and God alone, There is a peace of God that transcends our understanding, that gives us the strength to embrace every day, no matter what it brings. Amen. I've said this before. We can't possibly make sense of the things going on in this world through our limited understanding. We can't make sense of some of the things going on in our life through our limited understanding. We have to trust God. 
Hebrews 11:22 says, I'm sorry, Hebrews 10:22 says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswerving t- unswervingly to the hope we pr- profess, for he who promised is faithful. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. We serve a faithful God, and he is faithful to every one of his promises. So where is your confidence today, family? Paul made it clear for us when he says, I know in whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able. Let me end with this passage of scripture. Uh, I know we were uh, just talking up to verses uh, uh, 31, but let me share verses 31 through 39 that lets us know that we are more than conquerors. It says, what then shall we say in response to uh, these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Listen, family, there's nothing he will withhold from us. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, any sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be, to be slaughtered. But no, in verse 37 says, no, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, family, I don't care what you're going through today. Remember that God loves you, right? And there is nothing that he won't do for you. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. That peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. And he'll give you the answers that you need today. The strategies that you need to gather, uh, to, to, to go through any situation. The strategy that you need to, uh, address any situation that is happening in your life today. So let's pray. Father, we bless you this day. We thank you for the peace in the midst of challenging times. Oh, we thank you for your peace, God. We thank you that your hand of mercy and grace surrounds our lives, oh God. We thank you that you are with us. No matter what we go through, God, you walk with us through every situation in our lives, oh God. And you are speaking to us, God. You know the plans that you have for us, God, and they are plans to prosper us and not to harm us, Lord. So we know that we can depend upon that, that we can lean upon that, God. That we know that whatever we face, oh God, that you will get the glory both now in our lives on this earth and in the life that is to come, you will be fully glorified. And we thank you and we bless you. We submit our wills to yours today, oh God. We want to line up what we desire with what you desire for our lives, God. So we allow your spirit, your Holy Spirit to speak through us, to flow through us, God, and to give us your wisdom, God, and your guidance for our lives this day. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen.
I want to thank you for joining us for Salt Bible Study, again, a ministry of Vernon Park Church of God. Should you desire to give to this ministry, visit us at vpcog.org. Again, you can visit us at vpcog.org. I also would like to invite you to join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. on Facebook or YouTube to hear the word of God from our amazing pastor, Gerald January Sr. And as always, I want to leave you with this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen and God bless.